yeah so so like um how do you manage your emotions when when you face this sort of like disappointment like because like you're very passionate about climbing you're very passionate about being a competitor yeah i wouldn't say you are not passionate about studying but no one is really that passionate about studying <laughs> Okay, welcome to episode 2 of Pinch of Salt. Um, I have Mark today with me. Hello. Uh, renowned ex youth climber. Just made it into opens 20 years old. Um, okay, let's just jump right into it. La. Okay. Um, first thing I'd like to talk about is uh, you are known for being a rather successful, or rather, you have found success. In overseas youth competitions, uh, like walk me through how how you have reached that point in your life. So, from the very start of competition, uh, and then your growth as you like uh, walk towards uh, you being a successful youth athlete, right? So we'll start from the beginning. So when you were first starting out, what like what drew you into the sport? Yeah, I think like because I started climbing when I entered secondary school. That was sec one then, uh, and I was in Springfield Secondary School, mm. and it's and rock climbing was like one of their niche program. Mm. So Springfield is sort of like one of the only few schools in Singapore that has rock climbing. So it's like sort of like a unique sport. Mm. And I mean that caught my interest uh, that mm. not all the schools in Singapore has yep. sports climbing as a CCA. So like I joined the trials and made my way through into the school team mm. and that's where I started climbing. Mm. And then uh as for competition because like uh in Springfield like we don't really uh, push our secondary one students to compete mm. yet because like we are still new so mm. sort of like we want to start with the basics first yep. so but I was fortunate like that my teacher in charge at the time Mr. Teo mm. he like sort of like push a few of us in the sec ones to like he encouraged us to like compete so my very first competition was uh, Boulder Active, mm. 2013 or 14, I can't remember. The Suntec one? Yeah, the Suntec oh, one. Okay, okay. So it's like, compete in U17, but I did badly. Mm. So it's like... How, how badly is badly? I don't think that I was even like, at the first, first page, page of uh, the list. Wow, yeah. <laughs> but at the time, I was still like, still like, I didn't really take competition that seriously. I was like... Yeah. Just, just to join now. Just, eh, just join now. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. there is an opportunity open, so mm. like why not just go for it? There's no harm mm. to trying it. Yeah. Okay, okay. So then fast forward a little bit to the point that you are now competing in opens, right? Yeah. So uh what was your journey like making your way from novice and then intermediate and then open? What are some of the key key players or key areas that really push you forward to I progressing as fast as you did? Uh? I think when I was... I... I... Mm, okay. Let me think. Oh, I left U17 and promoted to Novice, I think when I was in SEC 2. Mm. And that's also when I was in a uh, uh, climbing gym youth team. Mm. Uh, mm. Then... I sort of see my progress there, like I'm getting stronger slowly, but also along with me, I think there's a lot of other strong youth climbers like ERP, Aloysius, Aloysius. Kwan Liang, okay. Jada, <laughs> okay. Jeremy, all these, like, it's all these people who are like uh, within this group of us, mm. like the really strong ones who always like sort of push me. Because mm, mm. 
I don't think that I'm talented or like strong. Mm. Then sort of like have I know that I have to work hard for what I want. Mm. So I I had to train hard to like keep up with the other other guys in the gym. Yep. yep. Then yeah, so like my main competitors when I join local comms or like represent the school at uh, national schools is like usually the same faces. Yep. And I think that sort of pushes me pushes me to like uh train harder to mm. get better and like so that I can keep up with them in during be it like during training or like at least sort of like within the same yep. boundary I'll say yep. like in competition. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. So then um okay so we move forward to getting into the youth team. So what was your first international competition? And oh. yeah. So yeah, <laughs> think, so what was it? Oh, I think there's a lot of people who I should like be thank I mean like I am thankful of, for like having these people in my life like at the start of my uh climbing journey like Garrick, mm. Coach Garrick. So like he intro I mean he pushed me up to like get into the on site youth team at when I was I think at the end of sec one mm. or early sec two. Mm. Then after that I was put together with the on site youth team to train and thing. So that's my start because uh I I'm not sure if any one of you guys can recall, but like in 2014, there's a group of youth team who went to represent Singapore in Indonesia. Mm. But because I wasn't like uh, in the team yet, mm. then because uh, I didn't get in the team through trials, okay. so I I had to I was sort of like just place into the team just to train with them. Mm. Yeah, then so I didn't compete. Then from then onwards. Basically, every Saturday we train together as a youth team. Then my very first opportunity to compete for internationally and represent Singapore was at Malaysia, Putra Jaya. Putra? Yeah, in 2015, Sec 3. That's the one that I went also? Yeah. But I d- you, you went as a coach. Yeah, 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 as a coach of yeah, the manager yeah. or something, right? Yeah. So that was my very first comp. As a youth athlete representing Singapore, so it's like mm. it's really like an honor la, to represent Singapore. Mm. Then, uh, how did it go? Uh? I think it went fairly well, and I'll say it's like reasonably good enough for me. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I've never competed at such like high big level. scale, yeah, high level, and compete with like all the young. Or basically the best in every mm. country for mm. their youth. So it's like, yeah. You, oh, you went finals, right? Yeah, and yeah. also I managed to uh, win bronze medal in Boulder mm. when I was in youth B. Mm, mm. Yeah. So like that was the start, lah. Yeah, that was the start. Okay. Okay. Sick. So so like f- like from then forward, right? How did that? Like how did that competition change your perspective? Mm. Approaching the next, like your like your next maybe five years of youth, youth uh international competition, yeah like, like did it do anything to like okay like, maybe, I have a real chance at you know doing well at like whatever competition I, 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 I entered. I felt that like that did really like change my mindset because mm. mm. before that I was like just, uh, a climber who, represents Singapore and I think like or I just compete to represent my country, but mm. I'm not sure whether I'm good enough or not to mm. win any medals or go to finals. Yep, 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 yep. But it's like, sort of like, brighten up my world uh, that, mm, 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 mm. hey, I'm like, I managed to even win a bronze medal on my first international comp, so it's like, mm. like, I was really surprised by myself. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And from then onwards, I've, felt that I had this mindset that I've done this before mm. then but I've done that through like all the training and hard work I put in so it's like if I want to 
have the same result, I, I can't just like expect uh, myself to be lucky all the time. Yep. I think uh, hard work and luck comes hand in hand. It's like you work hard now, so it's like you sort of got like 50%, and then the other 50% also comes down to luck. Like mm. whether you feel good or like you whether you your, like your style at, or whatever. Yeah, right. then also like are your competitors feeling good on that day or not? Like maybe they're off. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. So from that day onwards, I told myself that I want to do my very best and uh, continue to bring medals back for Singapore if possible. Mm. Yeah. So uh, like I think like your image in the climbing scene has always been that hardworking guy. Like that, like that guy who like fights for what he wants. When did it, like, it's like when did this uh, like attribute really get ignited in you? Like at what significant point, or is it like you have always been like this since the very start? Mm, no, I wouldn't say that I was like always this guy who like, like do my best. Guy. I wouldn't say that I'm the most hardworking guy in the gym also, because like we can't base like what I like the effort I put in. Everyone have, because you also have to see like under what circumstances we are put in. Mm. It's like some might have like disadvantage and advantage, but they are still putting in the same effort. Mm, mm. And maybe like uh, this training works for them and maybe yep. this training doesn't work for them, but they still continue to work hard mm. without having like a proper s- sort of like, uh, how to say, sort of like there's no proper guidance or something, yep. but they still put in the same effort. Yep. So yep. I'm, so I I would say that I have the proper guidance when I was like, like you have the right people. Yeah, like I had I had the right people beside me to guide me and mm. tell me what to do, what's correct, what's wrong, oh, and how oh. can I improve from here and how yep. can I improve from there. So from the yeah. very start, like you were kind of like almost blessed with, yeah, like the like the right people being placed <laughs> in your life, like right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I don't think that I'm. Uh, someone who worked for what I want before mm. that because before uh, I started climbing I was in when I was in primary school I I'm not someone who studies a lot so what do you do? so I like basically I'm very like naughty I'll just like uh, after school every day is like go home change and just go out play with my friends like mm. even when it was during like the PSLE phase mm, mm, I was mm. still doing the same thing okay and also I'm known like for doing things halfway so okay like, if when things get hard or like uh, when I feel like I don't feel like doing it anymore I can just like stop mm. uh, and like you have no problems with it uh? yeah like I don't really like have second thoughts of it like I won't even have like maybe like after one two days after the I wouldn't like, I shouldn't have like done this or this or Give up or like stop. Mm. Okay, I should okay. like continue. Like, I just like do whatever I want. Mm, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. But then I think climbing, uh, the competition, the result that I get, the achievements, like sort of make me feel that as long as I work hard, mm. I can uh, at least get close to what I want. Yeah, at least the chances of me. Uh, achieving my goals is higher than compared to if you were to do nothing lah, right? Yeah. Or if you were to just like just give up halfway. Give up, yeah. 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 So like taking this mindset into Okay, like because it is a given that like you have had this amount of success in the international scene, right? But you haven't had much success in the local as much success in the local open scene. Which is kinda weird, right? Because yeah. like when you're competing against the best in the world, right? And then yeah. you can like you like you suddenly can do well. But then when yeah. you're competing against the best in your country, then it's like, eh, you know. Yeah. So like, what do you feel is the difference between competing in Singapore? Okay, like we just speak about bouldering comps, right? Because we don't really have much lead in speed comps. Mm. So for local border comps and for international border comps, right? What is the key or like the key differences that you would say that we like, like alters your like the fluctuation of your results, you know? I would say that like uh, cause I, I would say like the. How I feel about the other guys, the stronger guys. Is like I train with them all the time. I train with you all the time. Mm. So it's like I know that uh, how strong you guys are. What are your strong like your, uh, strength and what are your weaknesses, and then 
but usually like my strength doesn't like the type of climbing style that I'm better at is like not uh, always it's not as prevalent in Singapore is it? climbing yeah. yeah then also like which is uh, what specifically powerful moves uh, sort of like the pinch mm. and also no, no, I said, like, what, like what are your strengths Oh, my strength. Like the, the, like, the, like the things that don't come up in... Oh, I think like, like local very, coach. very technical kind of routes. Mm. And then like long routes. Mm. Um, yeah, I would say they are like more or less my strength. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Because like, I would say in terms of cream, cream strength, I think everyone is like strong. Because I, I don't consider that as my strength when I put myself against with the stronger people in Singapore. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. So, uh, like we zoom into the local scene a little bit more. So, um, for the local scene as of now, right, it's quite it's quite dominated by by uh, an equal share of uh, the youth climbers around your like your age mm. and the like, and the older guys are yeah. like Hakim and whoever lah, right, like Dennis yeah. or Human or whoever. So, like I just want to hear your thoughts on the the like the like the two groups of climbers what are the key differences you see in between them and what and what sets 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 uh each each group of people apart in in your opinion uh, or i mean if there are no differences also you can just say you know as in like uh between the older yeah. climbers and the yes young. yes I think yes i felt that like the type of support that we are uh given mm. is different because i was like I would say that I'm like sort of like in between because mm. mm. in the recent years like for the youth we have like support coming from NYSI mm. and then like because NYSI and SMA are working together and so like I will I would say that I'm the start I yep. had the taste of both like the the like the no support and the support la. yeah the no support and the support so it's like but uh, it was because you did well that's why the support kept kept coming in right like you were the first person to like like yeah. take it to the international stage right yeah i think i was like the first to receive like a lot of support from uh both smf and nyc mm. because like uh when i went to the world cup in russia and also switzerland mm. there was like partially like uh a sponsor from S- uh nyc sorry yep. yeah so it's like and from there right, it's like I get a lot of support from it. Right? Like I had uh, nutritionists, psychologists, and then I got my own uh, strength and conditioning coach. And whenever I have uh, like injuries, then it's like got physio. Yeah, I got physio. The doctor or the physio will come down to take a look at me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we had none of that. Yeah, so it's like I, sort of like I had uh, at the start, and maybe like in twenty fifteen. Mm to 2017 mm. that's like where uh support from like i had little or no support mm. yeah so it's like even if i had support it's sort of like uh coming from my sponsors like all sports mr anthony mm. like being so generous to like sort of like sponsor me to compete overseas yep yeah yep uh, i think anthony is very very he's, he's a very good man now yeah yeah, so I would say the type of support that we receive is like uh, different. But how about as as a person, as a or like as a climber, like the climbing attributes, the you know, like the like the like their mental state, the like the types of focus. Like, what do you see different when you watch older climbers climb and when you watch younger climbers climb? Like within the like the like the same competitive field, of course. Mm, yeah. I would say like the. Uh, mindset and training hours they all put like during training because like if you compare the older guys and the younger guys right mm. like you'll find that the older guys will spend less they'll try to spend lesser time in the gym but making them very productive mm. whereas the youth will have more energy so it's like they will try their best to stay in the gym for very long mm. and also like make it very productive mm, 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 and mm. Yeah, so it's sort of like, it's the mindset that they have yep. when training. So it's like, uh, either giving it like your best in like that one attempt or like 
uh, just trying to maintain, sustain your energy throughout the time yep. that you can last in the gym. Yeah. Mm, mm, but it's also because, like, I feel like the climbers who are more experienced, they already kind of know what works for them. So when they go to the gym and they have an objective, right, it's just like, mm. okay, I want to achieve this. Yeah. Then once it's done, it's done, you know? Like, don't have to, like, laze around. Because, like, I recall when I was younger, I can spend, like, 12 hours in the gym, you know? Yeah. Like, no problem. Just like, wow talk with friends, la, go, go eat lunch, come back, lie down, sleep, sleep on the mat, yeah, and then, then go and climb, that kind of thing. Continue climb. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, but when we get older, we also have like other commitments, like mm. either like study mm. or like work. So it's mm. like, they have to really like prioritize their time, their uh, sort of like, make sure that they do what they can within the given yep. time. Yeah. Yep. So, since you mentioned studies, right? Yeah, like let's talk about uh, Juggling your academic life, uh, juggling training, as well as I understand that you wanted to be a pilot, so you also had to juggle you flying club at one point of time. Yeah. So like, talk us through how like how was that for you? Mm, I would say like um, balancing like, cause like at you know sec three, mm. ever since I competed in the one the Asian youth in Malaysia, mm. and I came back with like. Uh, the mindset to continue compete and mm. also train. Mm. So I knew that in order to train and do my best, right, I have to like have a sort of like a schedule for me to follow every mm. day, every week. So yeah, it's sort of like making your time, uh, like breaking your day into different parts. Yep. So when you study, when you train, when you rest, mm. yeah, then, yeah, it also takes a lot of sacrifice, like, you have to, what I sacrificed was, like, my f time with my friends, mm. and also, uh, time with my family, because I don't often go back home very early, mm. even yeah. when I was in secondary school, it's, like, sort of, like, either I'll be, uh, after school, mm. then it's, like, school training, yep. then I, Go back at about. I'll be home by eight usually, cause training usually ends at six thirty. Then after all the debrief and uh, cool down, then we will go back. So by earliest usually is eight. Mm. Then on non-school training days, I will train outside. So it's like after school, uh, take a short nap, mm. then uh, continue with. Uh, some like short revision or study mm. then after that go to the gym so usually on these days I'll go back like at 11 or 12 because mm. mm. I train until the gym closes yeah, yeah so sort of like you need to know what your goals are like if my goal is to com uh, like do my best and like be at my peak form for competition then I have to like know what I have to do mm. so I know that I have to train but mm. I can't give up my studies mm. so I had to sacrifice whatever is not related to that yep. to like to like make space uh, right yeah yeah so given that because you also have your youth line club right mm. yeah then yeah. then like that also adds into the mix of like managing your time things like that you, it was quite crazy right the, like during that period of time where you have to go and fly then you have to study then you have to train things like that do you ever feel like you are not doing enough because of your circumstance? Like, while you are flying, your competitors are training, you know? Things like that. Yeah, yeah I felt like when... Because I still want to become a pilot and mm. hopefully a fighter pilot in Air Force. Mm. So, like, I, I'm still working towards it. But when I was in the youth flying club, I was sort of like juggling like my studies, my training and as well as flying. Mm. So like how I'll say like really tiring. Mm. It's damn tiring, right? Yeah. Yeah, like I have I would say that at that point of time I didn't really uh have enough time to sort of like you know, do mental training for my pre my flights. Okay. So then like uh in terms of training because I still compete, I felt like I didn't put in like enough time to mm. train. Yep. Then in terms of studies like 
sort of like wow it's like whatever wow, exam coming and then it's like <laughs> eh, like you're not doing this and you're not doing that so it's like, so it's like I don't feel like I'm uh, putting enough effort and time to all these three commitments yep yeah so something has to give up right yeah something have something has to give up I, I have to give something up or either like when the time comes right something will just like like you need to drop it uh. it's, yeah it will just like you will just see that sort of like failure or disappointment and mm. you will just like get dropped out from like you will have to it will be taken away from you uh, sort of mm, that mm, way mm, yeah mm. yeah so so like um, how do you manage your emotions when when you face this sort of like disappointment like because like you're very passionate about climbing you're very uh, passionate about being a competitor yeah I wouldn't say you are not passionate about studying but no one is really that passionate about studying. <laughs> yeah, but and, like, and then like you, like you also want to be a pilot very badly. Yeah. So when the disappointment hits, right, it really hits quite hard. Mm, and then yeah. like, how do you, how do you cope with it? You know. Thing. Because mm, like to be honest with everyone, like I got phased out from, uh, my flying. Mm. And then like ever since then, I think for a good. Mm, four months or six months, close to that. Whenever my grandma at home talk, talk to me like asking me because like, my flight is like sort of like fixed. It's like uh, every Saturday we have theory lessons, and then af- right after that, uh, depending on how we schedule our flights, uh, I will have to head down to the uh, Salita Airport to go take uh, my sorties, or like I have the sim flights. Mm. Yeah, so, but because of my training and school, so I usually just push, I usually put all my sorties in, all my flights in the morning. Mm. And my grandma will ask me like, uh, why why haven't you been flying or something? Like, eh, haven't you been going to Salita Airport or something? Then I'll like, try to like, ignore, but every time after that, I'll like, just like, go into my room and just, just like, think about it lah, like mm. how much I miss flying. Mm. Yeah, then on those very, very bad days when I feel like, especially after like bad training days or like uh, receiving, or like when I study, then it's like nothing is going into my head. Mm. Those days and like I get reminded of all these sort of like failure and disappointment, I'll sometimes like just cry la mm, in my mm, bed. Mm, yeah, mm. but I just like sort of like ask myself why this happened. There's always a reason to why things happen. Mm. So I I try to like ask myself why and like from there everything makes sense uh, like or because I didn't put in enough effort into flying. Mm. So so yeah la, then I got faced out. But mm. like then uh I also felt that because I put too much I had too much commitments on my plate. Yep. So it's like couldn't balance them well. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. yeah, like I guess it's just the it's just the natural progression of life in general. Mm. Like you fail, you learn. Like yeah. as long as you can look back at where you feel right with a yeah. clear mind, I feel like it's always the right way forward. La. Yeah, so I think like I take failure and disappointment quite quite hard on myself. Mm. I I will I will never blame uh someone else for my mistake or for like my for the sort of like why this happened to me. Yep. I will never like pull blame or like, oh, it's because this person or this thing happened. I will never do that. I will just like uh, put it on myself. I'll like ask, I will always have this voice in my head that's like, because you are not good enough. Because mm. you are not putting enough effort. But that may not necessarily be the case all the time, right? And if it's not the case, you have to like, kind of like be a little bit flexible with the mentality and then yeah. Like reason with yourself as to like maybe sometimes it's really not your fault, you know. Yeah. And but that like, will help you cope, right? Cause also like, I feel like when in such situation, it's like you wouldn't have like these positive mm, vibes mm, coming. Yeah. You would, like you wouldn't have these kind of thoughts. Mm. Yeah. So from there onwards, I also like lost the belief in myself. Like I don't think that uh, I'm good enough again. I don't think that I'm. Like the mark that I used to be mm. when I was in like uh 2015 where mm. I won bronze medal or like mm. that. Yeah. So it spilled over to climbing as well? 
yeah, I think it spilled over to like uh, my personal life as well. So I I realized that I distanced like myself from people around me as well. Because you just want to be isolated. Yeah, I feel that like uh, I'm better off alone. Yep. So like uh, I don't want my mistake or disappointment to cause like harm to other people. Um, yeah, like I don't want others to be affected because of how yep. I feel.